The Fang Networking Podcast promotes successful business experts. I'm Tom Riach, known as the King of Networking, connecting people throughout the world from my podcast studio in Brazil. Joining us today from Atlanta, Georgia, is Daryl Stevens. He has a background in music and business. He's co-founder of Bass Parlor. Bass Parlor is a music app that empowers musicians with an easy way to find and connect with other musicians worldwide. So, Daryl, how do you think AI will affect the music industry and musicians? All right. Well, first of all, I appreciate bringing him on the show, Tom. Um, you know, thanks a lot. I enjoy this conversation. Uh, well, AI, you know, AI is going to really hit every single industry hard. I think it's going to hit the music industry specifically uh, in good and bad ways. I think if we harness it right, it can be really good because I think that it's going to allow artists and musicians another way to generate revenue. You know, outside of shows, outside of releasing albums. I think one thing that AI is getting better at is uh, mimicking the human voice and mimicking the human cadence and, and timbre uh-huh. of the human voice. Um, so there's, now, there's like, nothing ever better than the real thing. There's nothing better than the real thing for now. Uh-huh. But it might get to a point where it can mimic the real thing so close that you can't tell the difference. Mm-hmm. And so at some point you can't tell the difference. And do you even care what the difference is? If it makes you move like the, the whole point of music is, to, is it make you feel something, whether it's emotional, whether it's like the rhythm make you move, but it mm-hmm. makes you feel something. If you can feel something and you don't know if it's a human being or AI creating it, what does it, what does it matter if the end point is the same, you know? So um, I think if artists and musicians can get in front of it and, um, I think they can use it, they can harness it to create a whole nother revenue stream. Um, I say that because I remember maybe about two years ago now, maybe it was a year ago, they, they released the song, AI created a song with, uh, within the voice of The Weeknd, which is a big artist, and, and Drake, they're both huge artists. Mm-hmm. And they released it on the radio, it was, it was a hit, but it wasn't actually them that recorded, it was this AI mimicking their voice. Mm-hmm. Um, so just from that, just from that, I said, okay, if, they, if there was a, a way a platform where you can license out your voice. So uh-huh. basically you have songwriters who can write the lyrics and the voice, and then you can like, you can license your voice. They can use your voice, release the song. You get a cut of that song. So I think it, it so you it become really, owner of your voice and become the owner of your voice. Exactly. You just become the owner of your voice. I think that's what it can do. So you own your actual voice and then it's like owning your name and like your image and likeness, right? So they can't use your image, your face and all that kind of stuff without paying you. Same thing with your voice, you know? So it's going to go through, a, I think it can go through a whole transition period, kind of like streaming did. You know, you had a lot of like Azores and all these different websites where mm-hmm. you can rip digital and all this stuff. But now, you know, you got Spotify set up, you got Apple Music, and then, so they've monetized this. It's a whole industry that they monetize. I think the same thing can happen with AI. Um, but it's going to be dirty and ugly to get to that point. But I think that's the end point it can get to. Well, what I think, too, obviously, uh, from the musician standpoint, uh, everything mm-hmm. you just said uh, really makes them need to be more technologically enhanced, let's put it that way. Uh, you right. can, play, you can right. play the instrument, or you can sing, or you can do both. Uh, mm-hmm. But you do, you know, the, the, the acoustics become important, the, the pickup, uh, the mechanical side of how that's being uh, captured and re- uh, needs to be understood. Right. Uh, yeah. But but the feeling part, uh, I still think has value because no matter how we consume or hear, right mm-hmm. or see, uh, it's tough to get away from being and touching. Uh, yeah. And, you know, in the environment of actually looking at somebody or seeing somebody or hearing mm-hmm. somebody in face to face, singing, dancing, or being involved, it's a whole different. That's a whole different uh, facet. Yeah, no, you're right. You're completely right. So I don't think like touring and live shows, I don't think that's going to go anywhere. But a lot of things surrounding it could go somewhere. The mm-hmm. actual music, recorded, or the recorded audio. Even now you have, you can live stream, you can view a concert remotely. Right. What, if the, what if you're not viewing an actual performer, but you're viewing like a, the AI version of what the performance would look like? So uh, I agree with you. There's things you can't you can't touch the you can't change the human element. Like we want to see people, want to be around people. You can't really change that. Right. We want to listen to music live. But what if everything or AI could kind of influence everything surrounding that? You know. So really, today we need to be technician. All of us. What we're doing right now. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, we're just right. generating voice content. 
Uh, and what you're doing, the music becomes the music content, but again, it's the voice. So yeah. we right. own what we say, and there's a good side to that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think the, I think the floor is really going to rise a little bit. So we don't have to know, like now, we, we have to know a lot more of the basics of how to like a podcast, how to set up a podcast studio, the sound, everything like that. So the floor is risen. Right. But, you know, same thing with the music industry. We might have to, you know, how... Uh, how does AI work? How does it make my voice? All these things might we need to have the the raise that floor, but you know, I think that you could also partner with somebody, or partner with a company or something like that. They can get into the to the nuts and bolts of it. But as long as you have that basic knowledge, I think right. you can you can monetize it. Well, I can know? see that, and I see that on your site. I'm looking. It says connect with musicians worldwide because uh, mm-hmm. I saw in your background you actually de- developed the parlor as a studio pre pandemic. Right. Mm-hmm. And so one door closes, another one opens, right? Exactly. Uh, so now that exactly. sort of, I would say forced you, but it helped you uh, become more virtual. Yeah, it did. It, did. it was actually um, a good thing. I mean, no one wanted to go through the pandemic. That was tragic and that was tough to go through. But what, for our company, what it did was transitioned us from like a brick and mortar, sp- mortar spot where right. an actual studio mm-hmm. in Atlanta, where really our reach was Atlanta, maybe some of the surrounding cities, mm-hmm. to have the trans, uh, you know, the, to pivot and transfer that to an app where we are now we have a global market. So, right, right. and a lot more potential. And music and musicians are everywhere. Everywhere, exactly. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Well, Daryl, how can our listeners find you? Uh, we can find me a couple places. You can always go to our, to our, um, to our website it's base parlor b-a-s-s-p-a-r-l-o-u-r app so base parlor app.com uh from there you can go in multiple places uh check out our youtube show we have a youtube show called the base parlor mashup where we take two different musicians give them an hour to create a brand new song from scratch that started mm. the game of getting a lot of screen steam mm. and uh, see what the song they come up with uh so you know go to youtube search for base parlor also, uh, check us out on Instagram, Instagram at Bass Parlor. So you can, and then finally, I guess, uh, bass, if you're a musician, check out our app. Check out the Bass Parlor app. It allows you to, you know, connect with other musicians. We now have what we call Parters Live, where they can go live and they can, you know, go take lessons, give lessons, and just a great way to network and find musicians to work with. And that's on Google Play. It's on uh, the App Store. And just search for Bass Parlor. Very good. Well, Daryl, thanks for being here. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. Enjoy the conversation. Okay. And for our listeners, it is Daryl Stevens, D-A-R-R-Y-L, the last name S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S, Daryl Stevens. You also find him on LinkedIn for a business perspective to music, TikTok, and at BassParlorApp.com, BassParlorApp.com. Cafe Networking is brought to us by Focus MI Market Intelligence, an agricultural market research specialist in Brazil. More information at focusmi.com. Talk to Tom, talk to the world. Thanks for listening. Until the next time here at Cafe and Networking Podcast. (laughs) 